Now the transactions generate signatures based upon their outputs and their private keys. We need to provide a way to verify the authenticity of those signatures. Eventually, we'll provide a system where multiple users are submitting transactions to a collection. And then miners on the blockchain network will take a chunk of the transactions in that collection and then include that as data for the blockchain. However, they can't take any arbitrary chunk of transactions. They should only include valid transactions. Therefore, to check the validity of transactions, primarily, they need to verify the signatures on each transaction input. Let's begin adding the signature verification in the chain util class. Within chain util, we'll provide a new static method called verify signature. So after the hash function, let's make a new static function called verify signature. The method will take three parameters, a public key, which will be used for the verification, the actual signature to verify, and then a data hash, which will represent what data we want to find as a result of decrypting the signature using the public key. Elliptic, our cryptography and private and public key module provides a key object for us that has a verify method. This verify method returns a true or false value to represent the validity of an incoming signature. So to use this verify method, well, we'll need the key object itself. And luckily, we can get this key object by using a key from public function within the EC instance that is created at the top of the file. So in this case, we're going to return ec.key from public. So as of right now, it's returning the actual derived key by using this public key over here, because as we use this function, we're going to provide the public key that is the input for the verify signature function. And now this public key, we encoded it in the hex form. So when we create our from public key, we're also going to say decode it within that hex representation. And finally, we can now chain the verify method based off of this generated key from the public key. So let's chain dot verify. And the verify method takes two parameters. First, we provide the data in its hash form. And luckily for us, it's the data hash that we have inputted into the verify signature function. And then the second parameter is the actual signature to verify. And again, we have that since it's one of the inputs to the actual function. Excellent. We now have a verify signature method within our chain util class. Now let's utilize this method within the transaction class in order to verify the entire transaction object itself. So we'll make a static function called verify transaction within transaction.js. So right at the bottom after sign transaction, we'll have an equivalent function called static verify transaction. And then this will have one parameter, the transaction that we want to verify. Within this, we're going to return a call to the chain util signature or verify signature function that we just created. So let's return chain util, and then we're going to call the verify signature method. So this function takes the three pieces of input. The first is the public key to use for the verification. And then we have the public key with the address of the transactions input object. So it's first input is going to be transaction dot input dot address. So that is the public key of the actual input that we're verifying. The second parameter to the verify signature function is the actual signature. And likewise, that is within the input object of the transaction. So that's transaction dot input dot signature. And finally, the data that we want to verify is the hash form of the transaction outputs. So it's called chain util and then get the hash form by using the dot hash function of the transaction dot outputs within the actual transaction object. So overall, we're returning a call to our verify signature function to verify the transaction. And then the actual inputs are the transaction input address, as well as the transaction input signature. And then finally, all of the remaining outputs of the actual transaction. All right, perfect. That wraps up verifying transactions and signatures. To make sure these functions work properly, let's add some unit tests to our transaction test suite.